God bless you. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. God bless you. I'm glad you're here. I thank God for you daily, and I pray for you daily. Believe it or not, pray for me and my family, and I'll continue to pray for you and your family. So welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez. God bless you. If you're on the Soul Winners with a Z.org website and you're watching this on the very top, do me a favor on the very top of the website, put your name and your email address. I want to send you something. I want to send you something that might interest you. Amen. Into your email box, into your inbox. So you send me your, you type in your best email and you'll get some good information. Amen. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's good information for you. Amen. So let me just see who's here. Brother Milton, good morning. God bless you, my bro. God bless you. Good morning. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. This is day number 12, amen, of the 21 Days of Impact. Brother Damien, good morning. God bless you as well. Number 12, day number 12, man, of the 21 Days of Impact, 21 Days of Miracles. I declare that over your life in the name of Jesus. So we're here, and we should be glad that we're here. Today we have a new day, a new start, uh, and we could get really into what God has. Today, we're going to be talking about our purpose. Everyone has a purpose, but some people go about life not knowing what that purpose is. Some people could be like I was. I didn't know what my purpose was until I got saved and I was 30 years old. So in other words, all that time from the time I was, you know, a, a toddler to a teen to, you know, a young adult, I didn't know really what my purpose was. I knew I could do some things and I was a jack, kind of like a jack of all trades type of guy. So I could do a little bit of music, a little bit of rapping, a little bit of DJing, a little bit of um, club promotion, a little bit of a uh, hard worker. And I could do a little bit. I just didn't know how to put it all together and find what my purpose was. If you get my, my meaning, right? So if we don't know our purpose in life, we'll just be existing in a life where everybody else is doing their thing and we won't know where we're headed. We won't know what we're doing. We won't know our purpose. So what is our purpose? Amen. And the Bible speaks a lot about our purpose because God designed us for a purpose and a plan. Amen. And he knows that every individual person that he created has different talents and gifts and we could put it all together to form one giant purpose, a purpose for the kingdom of God, a purpose for the Lord, or we could just, you know, be hoarders and take our gifts and talents and use it for the world and see what the world has to offer. So it's our choice. Either we use our gifts and talents and our treasure and our time for the Lord's purpose, or we use all of that for the world's purpose. And listen, I thank God that God took me out of the world system, amen, the way I was living. It would have just been all for the world, and I would have been all more beat up than what I am now because what the world has done and what I've done in the world. And thank God he changed my life and saw and changed my way of seeing, and I could see my purpose. It took a while, but God is patient. Amen. He's not like me, and I would have been saying, man, you took too long, so I'm out of here now. No. He said, okay, you're here now. Amen. And now I'm going to show you what the purpose that I had for your life was all along. Amen. I had a weird dream um, last night. I had a dream that I took. Um, I was on a, I, I had a DJ in, in Redding, Pennsylvania. And for some reason, I ended up in New York. And I walked through the highways with this cart that I had. I was carting something. I forgot what I was carting. I think it was an empty cart because I wanted to use the cart to set up my DJ equipment. Weird. It was a dream. It was weird. So I ended up in a bathroom with one of my friends that I know, that, oh, we, we call him Mid, um, that he um, lived with me in PA originally. He was in this big bathroom and he said, yo, what are you doing over here? And then uh, somebody tapped me in the shoulder. It was my other friend, Logic. And he said, what are you doing over here? I said, I don't know. I, I walked from um, Allentown to Reading, but I found myself in New York. And they were like, um, so what are you going to do? I said, I guess I'm going to take an Uber to Reading. And they would look at me like I was crazy because it was a weird dream. And I was like, I don't know what the purpose of me coming from Allentown, trying to head to Reading and ending up in New York. And I think that was God showing me, listen, people walk around the world like that. They think they're headed one place and they're they're determined to be headed one place and they leave and they do it by whatever means on foot, by car, whatever, to get to a place where they're going and they end up someplace completely different. 
And when they find themselves there, people ask them, what are you doing here? Why are you here? If you were supposed to go to Reading, you ended up in New York. Amen? So I believe that was God speaking to me. Amen? Because I hardly ever dream. I hardly ever dream. Like, I, I'm a daydreamer, if you know what I mean. I dream during the day. I see things, and I, I react, and I respond to things. I say, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's activate it. Let's go for it. But that dream was weird. Trying to go from one place to another, ending up somewhere place different. Uh, although people knew me in that bathroom. I don't know why we ended up in a giant bathroom. And I had a cart in my hand. And I, I could feel in the dream. I could feel the wind, cars flying by me, and I'm over here, like, jogging. And I don't know how long it took me to get from Allentown to Pennsylvania on foot through the highway with a with a cart. I think it was like a, a, tr a hand truck. And in my mind, I was saying, well, I need this so I could pick up the speakers and put them where I want, designing the room in my mind. Because I have in my dream, I have back to back DJ um, events. Weird dream, man. So if anybody interprets dream, let me know what that what that means. Amen. So we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 and 6. Um, but before that, I'm going to pray, and then I'll pray, and then I'll give you a minute to share this out, and I'll start sharing this out as well. If you know somebody that's not on social media, they could go directly to the website. And when they go to the website, all they have to do is scroll up a little bit, and they'll see this um, Morning Devo, or at least they should see it, because sometimes it gets blocked as soon as I put up um, any other content other than just my voice. So hopefully they can see it there. If not, this podcast there that they could listen to at any time they want. Everything's free. Amen. And on the very top of the website, if you give me your name and your email address, I want to send you an idea, something that I'm working on um, that's almost done. If you want to be involved in it, you can. If not, it's all good. I just want to make sure everybody knows um, the opportunity that's coming soon. Amen, Lord willing. So Father, I thank you that we do have a purpose. I thank you that everyone that's watching, everyone that's going to watch later on, that you would tell them and remind them that they do have a purpose in this life. Father God, I pray that you will reveal their purpose if they don't already know it. And I pray, Lord God, that you will help us walk in that purpose, that you will be with us every step of the way, according to your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and that you will be with us to the end of the age. So I speak life concerning all things living, and I speak death to all things that are trying to take us out that are not from you. I come against those things in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom. I speak peace. I thank you, Lord God, for our health, for our strength, for our protection that you give us daily. I pray for Arquine angels and ministry angels to everyone's dwelling place, everyone's workplace in the name of Jesus. And I pray for families. Everyone connecting has a family. I pray for their family members from the youngest to the oldest that they will get health, strength, and protection and they will get healed from any disease or sickness or that they will ultimately be saved and born again if they're not already born again. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. Let me give you a minute and when we come back, We'll jump into 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 and 6. We're going to be talking about our purpose. Well, rather, God's going to let us know um, through the Apostle Paul what that might look like in your life and in my life. I'll be right back. Amen. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. If this is your first time here, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I welcome you here and I thank you for showing up. I pray that you will get something out of here, whether you believe in the Lord or not, but that you will get something out of here that you could really use in your life in real time because God's word is a real word and it's alive and active 
and God's word will never return to him void. In other words, when you receive God's word, it will never go back to God and be like, oh, I can't do it for the sister. I can't do it for the brother. So here's your word back. No, God's word will go forward and he purposes his word and he protects his word and he performs his word in your life. If you just receive it, receive it in your life. Amen. God bless your sister, Joanne. Um, soon and soon enough, I'll get in contact with your sister. Amen. I'm trying to free up some time. Amen. So God bless you. First Thessalonians chapter two, verses four and six. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. So evidently, Apostle Paul was letting the people know um, he was not like others. Obviously, there was others that were trying um, to spread the good news for their own gain. And unfortunately, people are still doing that to this very day. Using the word of God, which is true, which is alive, active, sharpen that any double edged sword, powerful, the word of God is able, they're using the word, and they know that the word is powerful. And they might be, you know, in and out of the word. They might be using the word um, for the right purpose, and then they might be using the same word for the wrong purpose. But God knows the purpose, and he knows our purpose. So the Apostle Paul must have been up against some people at his time already, the first century church, that were trying to abuse or manipulate people with the word of God because he says our purpose is to please God not people so that means the opposite of that would, would apply some people were probably using the gospel the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ for their own purposes amen and to please the people some preachers do that I've seen them with my own eyes um, they're getting interviewed by popular people in the world that have millions and millions of viewers and followers and they're sitting down and they're in a show or they're being interviewed on a podcast or whatever and the things pop up you know the main questions that the culture is looking at christians saying you guys are you know slinging hate speech you guys are not for this you guys are not for that so the questions come up to the popular preacher or the popular evangelist and i've seen many of them back down but i also saw many of them not back down on the questions. And you probably know what they are. Homosexuality. What do you think about homosexuality? Are, are homosexuals going to hell? Is it a sin? Is it wrong? And I've seen preachers say their own opinion and kind of like push back gently. Or I've seen other preachers say, well, what I say doesn't really matter, which the same thing I would have said. What I say, my opinion about it doesn't matter. What does the word say? And they'll take them to the word and let God speak on the matter. Abortion, you know, same sex marriage, um, these type of things that the culture is blaming Christians and saying that we hate because we're against or we're not on the side of those things because the word says we're not on the side of those things. That's all. And I've seen people on both ends. Some people say, oh, I'm not going to talk about that. Who am I to judge? That's good. We're not supposed to be judge judging. But if the word of God says something about the subject or the matter or the question, uh, the easiest thing for us to do is say, listen, forget what I have to say. Let's see what God has to say about those issues. That's it. Good morning, Sister Rosa. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So Apostle Paul must have had people or must have been against people that were trying to use the good news, the gospel for their own purpose. Right. Because he goes on to say he alone examines the motives of our hearts. So there must have been a lot of pointing of the finger, a lot of judging of the, the preacher, the pastors, or whatever. Even in the first century church, straight out the bat, like right off the bat, they already had people that were going around with the good news, but they were using, for, using it for their own purpose, and they were using it to manipulate people. And that's still going on to this very day, unfortunately. Okay, God bless you. We must not compromise the gospel. We will have to answer to God. In love, let us proclaim the word, the truth. Amen. In love, and that's the key word, in love. Because if I went like this to everybody, preaching the gospel, pointing at their sin and pointing at their ignorance or pointing at whatever, 
then okay, uh, it could be true. But without love, then it's, I'm just like a, a clanging cymbal. I'm just making noise. And people are tired of hearing noise, right? I know I'm tired of hearing noise. I want to hear the truth and I want to hear it in love. Amen. And if it helps, it will help. If it doesn't, if it gets rejected, nobody's really rejecting me. They're really rejecting the Lord's word. Amen. God bless you, Titi. Jenny, good morning. Good morning to you as well. God bless you. Welcome. It's good to see you. So, Apostle Paul must have been going against these people already. Like, listen, I'm not them. Apostle Paul is basically saying, I'm not the one. Um, that's trying to win you over with flattery, like to, you know, flattering people with, you know, what they're saying. He says, never once did we try. And when he said we, it must have been him and his disciples, his people, uh, the churches that he visited. He said, never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. So he says, you already know that I didn't come here to flatter you with my words. I came here to give you the truth of the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. And I'm sharing it without any gain. I don't want anything from it. I just want to share the gospel message. And God is our witness that we are not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. What is your purpose? Are you out there just to get people's money by you know using the gospel to get that, to get gains? Because the apostle said, look. We're not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. That's good because a lot of people are pretending to be your friends just to get your money. And they use the money, the money that they get, maybe for their own gain. I don't know. But God will see all of that. And you will have to answer, like my cousin said, you will have to answer to that. You will have to answer God to all that stuff that you're doing. As for human praise, we have never sought out from you or you never sought it out from you or anyone else. And that's why I've been. I don't need human praise. Listen, if, um, you know, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't need your applause. I'm heaven bound. What destination is yours? You know, that's the way I feel about it. I don't need the applause of people. I need to, to you know, make sure that God is the one that's pleased, first and foremost, with the faith that he sees displayed. And then because of that, then, you know, you might get applause from people or you might get hatred from people. People don't like this message. A lot of people don't like this message because it brings something else into the picture. It brings someone over them in the picture. A lot of people don't like to bow down their knee to anything else than what they want to do in their lives. So what is our purpose? Our purpose, according to the scripture, is to be messengers that are approved by God. And that doesn't mean you have to have a pulpit. That doesn't mean you have to have a live stream. That doesn't mean you have to have a ministry. All it means is that when you're approved by God, then you be the messenger wherever you want to spread that message. And I suggest you start in your very own home. That's your first ministry. Amen. Before you go out there and try to save the whole entire planet. Amen. Why don't you try spreading the good news in your own family unit because you may be surprised a small family big family there might be somebody in your family that is not willing to receive that good that good news that message but as long as you keep continue to speak the message and live the message my god live it out don't just say it live it and then they have to respect how you're living and the choice that you made and the things that are happening through god in your life and through my life so for we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose, here it is. According to this version, according to this scripture, according to Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 and 6. Our purpose is to please God. Simple enough, right? To please God, not people. Sorry. That's uh, how Apostle Paul was inspired to write it. Uh, that's how I'm inspired to read it. And that's how I'm inspired to live it. Because I try to please everybody. It's not possible. The, the scripture says, at all times, when possible, be at peace with everyone. If possible. So if I'm at peace with you, um, it's not my responsibility for you to be at peace with me. It's not my, it's not my choice. It's the other person's choice. And a lot of times, I try to make peace with people. And they don't want to make peace with me. And that, that's that been all through my life. Amen. Um, even before I got saved. It's always been like that. Because people are people. 
if you ask somebody for forgiveness, it's not my responsibility or I can't force the other person to receive that forgiveness and ask for it back or vice versa. Um, we can only do what we could do on our end. And our purpose is to please God, not people. Although when you preach the gospel and somebody receives it, they will really, really um, be moved by that. They would thank you for having the courage to spread this good news. Because a lot of people are like this now. We don't want no problems. We don't want to be called haters. Of, you know, you know, we don't want to get locked up for hate speech, which is coming, by the way. Uh, we don't want to be, you know, lose our tax exemption because we stand on the word of God when it comes to biblical marriage and the lifestyle uh, of a man and a woman uh, in marriage. We don't want to lose our tax exemption. I don't want to um, risk getting kicked off of Facebook. Well, it is what it is, right? Don't back down from the good news. Don't back down from what the word says because we will be held accountable for that. Jesus said, if you, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. That's, that's a big ouch, eternal ouch. That's a big mistake. Don't back down. Every, listen, everybody is coming out with what they believe. Atheists are saying there is no God. Um, uh, the, the LGBTQ are saying, you know, you have to accept us. It's all about love. And, if, and if, you, if you don't love me, that means if you love me, you have to accept me, which is not true, by the way, according to Scripture. That is not true. Because if that was true, I wouldn't be saved right now. God never accepted my sin. Never accepted my sin. And he loved me regardless so obviously um to love somebody doesn't mean you have to approve of all the sin they're doing in their lives you don't have to approve of anything i'm doing if it's wrong and you love me you don't have to approve of it there's nowhere in the scripture that says god wants to needs to approve of our sin um, to show that he loves us do not trade the truth for anything amen amen yes sister joyce don't trade it's not worth it it's not worth it listen a half truth could be a whole lie Right? A half truth could be a whole lie. So, by me backpedaling on things, I'm basically telling you listen, I, either I don't know or God is not clear on it. You know, and that's just me. So, when people ask me the so called big cultural questions homosexuality, same sex marriage, abortion, you know, those key things that they're always saying that Christians are hating on, uh, I'm not going to backpedal. But I will say, what does it matter what I say? You want to know what I say, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter. What really matters is what God's word says about those situations. And if God doesn't speak directly to the situation, amen. There might be a story in the scriptures that you could talk about. Like when they ask you, do babies go to heaven? Well, the Bible really doesn't say what happens to a baby if they really go to heaven or not. But we have the story of King David that when his child died, when his baby died, he stopped mourning. And they asked him, Man, why did you stop mourning? He said, well, I know one thing. I can't, um, the baby can't come to where I am, but I could go one day to where the baby is. So we presume that he was talking about heaven. And he realized, or he had an understanding that this child was going to heaven. And he one day could be reunited with his child. So we have this story sometimes. We probably don't have the word for word answer in the scripture because no, no book could give you all the answers in life including the Bible, because if it was all in there, we wanna, there would be no book big enough to contain the pages of every single situation that happens in all our lives. But we have enough information to know that we have a God and we serve a God that knows it all. Amen? Even though he doesn't tell us everything all at once, but he knows it all so that way we could trust him with these questions and go to him. And I know a lot of people probably think I'm... Uh, and heresy when I say this God could speak outside of his word God could tell us something that's not in his scripture and it's coming directly from him it's not in here that doesn't mean God can't talk about it so enough with, with me saying oh I'm not going to preach nothing I never lived um, I don't say that no more I haven't said that in years because I've never been crucified on a cross when I'm going to preach about it I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to read it and I'm going to you know, continue to preach about it so that doesn't apply to me. If it applies to you, amen. If it doesn't, amen. I pray for boldness in the body of Christ. Yes, Robert, boldness. No more backpedaling. 
every time we backpedal, we are actually um, letting the world know that we're afraid and our God is not powerful enough. There's no reason for us to backpedal. God said, you know, one of the promises of God that's not going to be on one of my t-shirts is this, that we will have trials and tribulations in this world. And that because they hated Jesus and we follow Jesus, they're going to hate us because they hated him first. So whatever message we have connected that speaks Jesus and speaks the scriptures and speaks holiness, speaks justice, speaks love, speaks grace, speaks mercy, all those things that we speak according to the scriptures, a lot of, not everybody is going to like. And we have to be okay with that because look what they did to Jesus. Look what the Lord allowed them to do to him, I should say. Because no one took his life. He laid down his life for, for us. Amen. So I have a couple of questions and I'm out. What methods of witnessing does Paul employ here? What type of way did he use the gospel message? How did he witness to people during his time? According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 2 and 4, excuse me, 1 Thessalonians, say that fast, chapter 2, verses 4 and 6. Amen. And he says, and God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money as for human praise. So, in other words, he witnessed, like, with honesty. He says, look, I know there's other people out there that uh, might be using the gospel to get famous, fame, to take your money, to manipulate you, to control you, whatever. But he says, me and my crew, we're not those people. Amen? So, you already know, he says, basically. And he says, you know that we haven't used this scriptures, these scriptures for flattery. He said, never once did we try to win you with flattery. Never once. So pretty much he's blameless. I was watching, and I, I don't know if it was true or not, but I was watching um, this preacher on YouTube, and supposedly there was a demon on the altar where he was preaching. So he brought him up, started questioning the demon, and the demon was saying, I'm going to kill everybody as much as I can. You know, he had a, another voice. Um, the video looked it weird because... You know, he was speaking, but another voice was coming through his mouth and it wasn't synced and he was speaking on a mic. So I don't know if it was true or not, but the message is good. I'm going to tell you what happened. So supposedly this demon is speaking and saying that he wants to take everybody out. He wants to take everybody to hell. He wants to destroy people. And, you know, so the preacher asked him, so what about me? Do you have anything to say about me? Do you have anything to blame me about or accuse me about? So he gave him the mic and walked off, walked off the um, the altar, walked off the stage. And then the demon looked at him and he started mumbling and said, he, he was thinking, what can he get? What can he blame this preacher for? And the preacher said, you're going to bow your knees to the Lord if you can't find anything to blame me for. And the demon was going on and on and on. And then finally say, I hate you. I'm going to get you and said the, the preacher's name. I'm going to get you for this. I'm going to get you for this. And then he looked like, it looked like he was forced to his knees. Like I said, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to share the video. It, it, it's something, I don't know if it's real or not. But the message that I got from it was like, wow. So we're supposed to walk around blameless. That even a demon can't find blame with us, in us. Not perfect, but blameless. So Apostle Paul is saying, listen, you can't blame me for the other people that are using the gospel with flattery to flatter you or to get your money. Um, people who are pretending to be friends with people just to get their money. People who just wanted that human praise. It does feel good when you get human praise. I'm not going to lie. And you know what I'm talking about if you get human praise. Amen. But that's not what I'm here for. Obviously, if I was here for human praise, I'd be preaching a different message. You know, a different gospel that's popular right now in prosperity movements and word of faith movements and all that. I could preach something different other than this gospel. And Apostle Paul warned about that too. He says, anything else except the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that you preach, um, that's scubalon, it's, it's dung, it's garbage. He says, don't do that. Because I can, but I won't. Why? Because I'm not out for human praise. I'd rather take five people into the kingdom of God with me, with the right, right message, the gospel, instead of 500,000 people that follow me to hell. And, you know, if you do the math, 
let's see, 500,000 followers, say they all invested a dollar each, you know, I'll be doing all right. Five followers, say they only invested a dollar each, $5, I'll be all right. Amen? Because I'm not after human praise. If I was after human praise, I know exactly the catchphrases. I know exactly what to say. Because all you got to do is mimic the people who are, we call them charlatans that are using the gospel and their message and creating a whole lifestyle that's so glamorous that everybody wants in on it. It's called you know the glamour Christianity world. That you have Benzes, Benzes and Bentleys, airplanes and all that, which I'm okay with. I don't Listen, I don't, I'm not against prosperity. I'm not against people who are wealthy that are in the kingdom of God. I think we should be wealthy. If, we, if we're in the kingdom, then it means the kingdom brings wealth. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you floss in that, like there were shows that came out literally of these um, Hollywood pastors, and then they were living all this crazy ratchet life, having women on, women on the side, you know, just that. It was crazy, you know, but that got a lot of attention from the culture. Uh, they kind of like, they were feeling it because they're like, oh, that's cool. All oh, those preachers are just like us. You know, they're ratchet and, you know, they're rich and they have women on the side and everything. So, uh, you know, millions of viewers. But when you have someone who's living in righteousness, holiness, who's practicing justice and doing justice, um, it probably won't be as popular because it a actually comes against the culture. Amen. It, go against, it goes against the grain. No need to seek man's approval, but God's approval according to to the Apostle Paul, yes, okay, yes. And it's a hard pill to swallow, amen? And the temptation to me would be like, man, I want to reach more people. So let me try to do a certain thing in a certain way to reach a certain people so that way I could get them in and then I could compete with the opposers. So, and you see it all the time, unfortunately or fortunately, um, some people say, well, whatever works, we're going to try this, that, and third. We're going to try to look so relevant. We're going to try to speak so relevant. We're going to try to act so relevant. And then there's been churches that even um, look like a movie theater. You know those movie theaters that um, you, you could eat popcorn, they bring the food to you, and it's like a, a, watching, a watch and dine. I don't know what they call it, taverns and all that. I've been to some. The food was horrible, at least in the one I went into. And I've seen churches... Try to do that. Try to make it so welcoming that they will allow you to bring popcorn, food, or whatever, uh, drink coffee while there's preaching going on and all that stuff. And it makes it look like a big Christian club, you know, uh, a social club. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Whatever. I think there's this time and a setting for all of that. I believe in the homes that's so very intimate and possible, you know, in your home, the home church. That's why I know the home church is so powerful. And I know, I know some pastors that have home churches, and it's powerful. They might not have 150 or 3,000 people in their home, obviously, but what they do have and who they do have is being impacted by the gospel message in a home church. Sometimes I think, man, instead of trying to you know, keep buildings open and, and pay all these bills and do all this stuff to a structure, um, sometimes, if I, you know, sometimes I think if I was a pastor and a certain decisions I had to make about either, you know, going into tremendous debt because maybe this building is too big and it's not, you know, supposed to be for what God wants to use me for, I'll start a home church in a minute. I love the intimacy with smaller groups. And when it outgrows, if it outgrows, then we'll start going in that way. Amen. I think a lot of mega churches started from their homes. Amen. They started with what they had. They used what they had. Amen. They invited whoever they knew. And they preached this gospel, this word, and they found their purpose in that. What were some people claiming about Paul and his ministry? And how did Paul respond? Well, obviously, they were saying, listen, man, you guys are just flattering us. You guys are not really our friends. You just want our money. And the way he responded is the same way we, we should respond if we're ever accused of that, wrongfully accused of that. And he says, nope. He says, never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And if you know something to be not true about or not true about me, then it should be evident in my life. You know, you could go through all my videos. And if you find me ever trying to manipulate people to give money to the ministry, um, let me know. I'll look at the video. And if it's true, I'll apologize. I have no problem with apologizing and asking for forgiveness. But there's a difference between mentioning it, putting a website, 
and you making your choice if you want to donate to this ministry. There's a difference between me doing that or saying, oh, if you sow $100,000 into my ministry, God will bless you 100 fold in, in the mail and the check. I declare and I decree that you're going to get $1 million back. That's a little bit of manipulation. That's like, you know, you know, predicting something that you really don't know if it's really going to happen. I know this, though. When you sow into good ground, you will reap a harvest. When you sow seed into good, good ground, God's ground, you will receive a harvest. I'm living proof of that. I know that for sure. Guaranteed. But I can't say that's going to happen for everyone. I could pray that that happens for everyone. That's why in my messages or every time I speak about it, you hear me saying, I pray a hundredfold over the seed that you sow into this ministry return to you. And that could mean that God will bless you with money. It could mean he'll bless you with health, a breakthrough in your family, financial breakthrough, whatever, mind breakthrough. You know, you get your mental back. It could be a whole lot of things. But I can't know individually what's going to happen. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't want to be a fortune teller. I'm not a prophet per se. Only time I prophesize I'm when I read the word of God. Some people, I believe, have the gift of prophecy that God gives them um, word of knowledge. Amen. But I know 100% guaranteed that I'm a prophet when I read his word. Because this is a prophetic word. Amen. So every time I read his scriptures, <clears throat> I'm a prophet at that moment and that time. <clears throat> but I'm not going around saying I'm prophet Sam. And I know so. <clears throat> I know some prophets, <clears throat> and their lives are not as easy as you might think it is. Yes, a church without walls. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was accused, believe it or not, of trying to start a home church. It was just a Bible study, <clears throat> and it got so big that the pastors in the region and the pastors that I was under at the time, I was sent people to investigate. One time, I caught one of the pastors looking through my window. And I opened the door. I said, you want to come in? He said, oh, no, I was just passing by. I said, you want to see what's going on? So if you want to see what's going on, I'm inviting you in <clears throat> so you can see that this is not a home church, that this is a Bible study. <clears throat> it was funny because I was like, wow, why would I hide that? If I wanted to start a home church, I would have went to my pastor and I said, listen, God's calling me to start a home church. Will you support it or not? If not, you know, praise the Lord, I'll have to just... Um, devote my time and my efforts to the home church. But it wasn't that. It was a Bible study that went good. It didn't go wrong. It went good. And uh, it went so, it grew so much that my wife wasn't ready for it at the time. And she contacted um, the pastors and to let them know, listen, that's not, your wife's not ready for it. So if your wife's not ready for it, you need to concentrate on your marriage and your desires of your wife. And I was corrected. So, but. It is what it is. Yes, <clears throat> a church without walls. You're right, Sister Rosa. <clears throat> so I don't know why all of a sudden I got a frog in my throat. But <clears throat> instead of um, you hearing me coughing and trying to get the throat um, frog out, I'll let you guys go. So God bless you all. I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope we could get together soon. I'm going to try to put out um, two prayer moments, for one for Saturday, one for Sunday prayer moments so we could continue with the days we'll be in day 13 and 14 over the weekend amen so i want to continue giving out content so we could all be on the same day if you're in the fast with us amen some some people are further along they're almost done um actually they're done if they started on the first of january their 21 day fast is over amen and some people start on the third so it's almost over um, my camp my brothers and sisters, we started on the 10th, so we have a little bit to go. Amen. So God bless you all. I pray Holy Spirit fire, according to um, Brother Robert Battle, Holy Spirit house fires. <laughs> amen. I like that. And um, amen to all those who are watching and who's going to watch later on. I bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.